downhill start and you can be sure that's a fast one even if it is into the teeth of the wind as they run down the hill there so is this pace of this first six is that is that too much for the rest of the field or have they got this exactly right Grofdell is so experienced as is Marla as is Judd have they got this right and they're going to close that gap maybe not all the way to the front but perhaps they think there's a few women in that front pack that have gone too hard and they will close them up it's great to see Grofdell make that commitment to get back towards that front group and Jess Judd trying to go with her uh, but that really should maybe maybe Grofdell need, needed two kilometers to warm up before she could get back get back involved with medals Absolutely. She's been around the block at this championship so many times, the 31-year-old Norwegian. She knows how this works. She knows there's no medals handed out after the first 2K, and I think she's very sensibly paced her opening effort here and now is just starting to rejoin it. Parts of this course, I'm sure, for an athlete with a cross-country skiing background will feel like she's shifting through the mud, I suppose, in the highlands of Norway. And now Grovdal. The wily Norwegian athlete has rejoined them. I'm sure as she was warming up, she took a glance over and saw that Norway had taken gold via Jakob Bingebrigsen in the men's race, and she will be very keen to make it a double here, sitting quietly, a very sensible place she's taken up. They ran down into the wind there, and she benefited from the slipstream of all of them there. And it's Yasmin Chan who's been given the hard task to do all the running out front, but we've seen so many times in the past, Chan is more than capable of doing it all on her own. The battle up front. It's Sweden, it's Norway, it's Germany, and big news at Yasmin Chan. Is this lights out or is this just a, a dark patch for the four-time consecutive champion? She looks to be struggling big time. She has really, really significantly dropped her pace there. We saw your man Kripa step off. He was in contention for a medal and he couldn't finish the race. Yasmin Chan, she's still in the race. You can see her there. She's been overtaken by Lena Ray, but she cannot live with the pressure that Merif Barta is, asked, is putting on. She can't answer the questions the Swede is asking. And that is a shock. We did wonder when we'd see Yasmin Chan finally beating it, beaten at a European Cross Country Championships. All those titles back to back. She was hoping for a fifth successive gold today, uh, but it looks like we will have a new senior women's cross country champion today. It's certainly that point of the race. It's the really deep distress we're approaching, as I said, past the five kilometer mark now. And if you if you're not the big kicker, this is the point of the race where you want to move. And at times in the past, Caroline Birkeli Grovdal, she's such a strong athlete and she could run anyone in, out there into the ground, but at times she doesn't have the fastest kick. And if you're Grovdal at the moment, Hannah, are you thinking, I need to put pressure on here, this lap, or perhaps it could be another bronze? Yeah, Grovdal has to. She absolutely has to put her foot down. She's been moving even longer in the distances as she's moved through her career. Um, it's been great to see her on cross-country, steeplechase, 5,000, 10,000. Uh, but she certainly can't boast the, the speed that the women behind her have. Costa Halfen and Barta have sub four, four flat, sub two, 800 meter runners. Uh, and Grovdale will know that. She's a very canny, very smart racer. Uh, but she has to open up a gap on them if she's going to beat either of those. And it looks like Klosterhelfen is hurting. We mentioned about someone's going to need to attack to run that 358, 1500 meter speed out of her legs. And it looks like it's happening here. And this is the key zone for Constanza Klosterhelfen. She has to maintain contact over this next kilometer or that gold medal will be gone into the distance. If she can do that, it's very much within striking distance with the way she can finish. And we see Jess Judd and Alina Ray coming up from behind there. They look like they're going to catch up to Klosterhelfen very quickly. And it looks like this may now be a two woman battle for the gold between Mara Bata and Caroline Björkeli Grovdal. Can Grovdal finally get that gold that has so long eluded her at senior level? Grovdal and Bata, I feel they're just throwing punches at each other. If they were in a track race or a road race, you say maybe they're sharing this pacing, maybe they're trying to get a good time. But in a cross country, no, I think they're testing each other out. Every 400 metres, they're saying, well, I can kick again, can you? And it seems like the answer every time is yes. But when they hear the bell, it was Grovdal in the lead this time. But Bata is right there, sticking to her like glue, and I think she'll have another go at trying to get past Grovdale, and this is going to be a fantastic last lap. Brilliant. These two athletes have traded blows so many times. Grovdale 31, Bata 32. They've been fixtures on the European scene for so long, and what a race they're serving up here as the finale to a wonderful day here at the Spar.
our European Cross Country Championships in Fingal, Dublin. Gravdal, you get the impression she's sick of bronze medals. As brilliant as achievements as a bronze medal is at this level, she won them in this race between 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018. She's won bronzes on the track at the European level over 10K in the steeplechase back in 2018. She's won silver before, but she's never won a European gold at senior level here. And this is as better chance, best a chance as she'll ever get. And you get the impression, Hannah, that she's just very conscious of the speed of Marif Bata. And if she's going to do this, it has to be done in the next 800 meters or so i think you're right i think she really will want to to keep it keep the pressure on maybe we'll see her use the technical parts of the course we've seen some of the other winners do that so well come through that muddy corner and kick off uh, barter doesn't look as comfortable on the mud as grovdale does so maybe grovdale will use that to her advantage whether she knows that or not i'm not sure but she is very comfortable on the slippy muddy conditions She's driving hard now. There's a couple of little kicks, a couple of little hills that she can use to put the pain on Merif Barta. And for the first time, I think that is a slight gap between Grobdale and Barta. But she's looking back and you don't want to do that. You do not want to give Merif Barta any hope here. Merif Barta can stay in contention. She will use all of her track speed to the best of her ability. Absolutely. If this is going to be done, Grobdale has got to do it now. And you can see the pain on both these athletes' faces. They're inside the final kilometre now. They have absolutely gone to the well here. Everything they have, there's so much on the line. This will be a race they can look back on with such pride for the rest of their careers, the rest of their lives if they can do it. We check in on the team event. It's Britain from Germany, from Sweden. We'll see how that plays out towards the end. But at the moment, we'll look at the individual battle for gold in Kravdal, 7K into this race. She is in deep distress, but so is Bata behind her. And if you're Kravdal, you just have to take spirit from the fact that you've put five six meters into her try and turn it into eight meters ten meters if you're back to it, you're just thinking i have to hang in i have to get up this little short incline if i can do it i can use my 1500 meter speed to out kick her if you don't it's game over because grovdale is not going to slow down between now and the finish i think this hill is going to be decisive i think grovdale's got the bit between her teeth we've seen her this fatigue she's always this fatigue she always gives everything at the european cross country championships i think if she can open up another meter like you say eight meters nine meters ten meters barter she's rocking and rolling she does not like this mud as much as grovdale i think this could be grovdale coming home for her first senior medal but it's too soon to say that it is she takes a look behind grovdale she puts that head down the way her compatriot jakob binger brixen did earlier but this time the difference is there's no one in front of her Bata does the exact same. A lot of coaches will tell you, try and lean into the hill to just get up it when you're struggling. Shorten the stride and try and save your legs a little and put the pressure on your heart and your lungs. And the one thing we know about Caroline Björkeli Grovdal, she has oceans of heart in her running all down through the years. Ever since she won that European under 20 title in 2009 in Dublin, she's looking around her a lot though, Hannah. She is, but it might be she might be racing smart. She might be thinking, you know, do I do I go now and try and try and ruin Barter's spirit, which I think she really did up that hill there. But for Caroline Grovdale, if she gets this senior title, like you say, back in Ireland after her junior title, this would be such a phenomenal story. Merrif Barter working really hard. I think Alina Ray is up into that bronze medal position. She's closing slightly on Merrif Barter, but I think she'll run out of ground. But Caroline Grovdale just powering away, getting herself up to some lap runners. That's exactly what you want at this stage of the race, where you're trying to get further and further ahead of that second place runner. And it looks like Caroline Gerkley Grovdell has put this race to bed. She's done it in the hardest fashion. She's had to do it on her own. We thought Yasmin Chan might come in, might get that fifth consecutive title at the senior European cross country title, but it's not going to be the day for Chan. For the first time since 2015, we're going to have a name that's not Yasmin Chan on the roll of honor at the European cross country. And it is a woman who won the under 20 title back in 2009. It's a woman who won four consecutive bronze medals between 2015 and 2018. It's a woman who upgraded to silver at the 2019 Spar European Cross Country Championships on the hills of Lisbon. And here in Fingal, Dublin, Carolina Björkeli Grovdal of Norway, the 31-year-old star, is going to get her just reward for her persistence, her bravery, her class, her courage. Caroline Björkeli Grovdal is the senior women's champion at the Spar European Cross Country Championships. Looking back to second, it is Bata, brave in defeat, and it is a well-earned silver for the Swede.
and Alina Ray came through brilliantly for the bronze and Jess Judd with fourth performance that would probably deserve a medal but it's Ray who gets it today under 23 goals turns the senior bronze for her and Jess Judd what a performance by her Carolina Grogdale will really enjoy this moment she's waited long and hard she would have had to watch lots of other competitors take that gold medal when she would have she would have trained in the autumn hoping for it but 2021 in Finnall Fingal Dublin was Caroline Grovdale's year. This will be maybe the first of many. I'm sure she'll come back and try and defend this title. Car Carolina Grovdale won last time we were at the European Cross Country Championships. And she's got around about half an hour to figure out whether she can defend that title. We've had quite a few defending females winning back to back. Carolina Bekele Grovdale is going to do her very best to do the same here. Here's the leading trio. Grovdale now leaning into the hill and Chan we saw Chan really struggling on this hill the last time they came up it the first time they were negotiating a major big lap this is the second big lap of four so a lot of racing to come but Grovdahl nice and strong there leaning into it and look at Chan there oh comes to a standstill almost she's really not comfortable on these hills tells me that she she knows she's got to make the most of the downhill and in particular the flat section you know this is a fascinating course because in the background there through the trees you can see the flat field so about half the course is dead flat half of it is this challenging uphill and downhill and Chan is gonna have to do a lot of hard running and try and stretch the others on the flats I think that camera angle is great as well. It gives you that elevation, a perspective on that elevation. Uh, you can see the flat section below and how far down it is. Quite how far our athletes are having to climb as they come up this hill. But Grovdale piling on the pressure. And that was a canny move off Costa Halfen. And she sensed that Yasmin Chan was starting to falter and just moved herself round the Turkish athlete, right back on to the coattails of the Nor Norwegian athlete. One lap to go then, and Kloster Halfen has been applying the pressure for the last couple of minutes. And I think, Hannah, that uh, Grovdal is hanging on here. The, the brow is furrowed. She's not up alongside the German, letting her know she's feeling fine, which is what do you do if you're feeling good and somebody starts pushing? You just come along on the side and say, is that the best you got? You know, a psychology, maybe give them a nudge with the elbow. But uh, I think uh, Grovdal in second place. And I'm, I'm a bit surprised that... Uh, Kloster Helfen hasn't had a little glance over her shoulder to see what's going on behind and maybe to get a quick glance at the features of Grov Del Rey has put in this fabulous search and Datka as well, three Germans in four four Germans in six unbelievable that is brilliant I mean, Jess Warner Judd at the moment the best of the Brits but that German team score is going to be infinitesimal and that's I can think Grov Del is slightly got herself back towards Klosterhalfen. It does seem like Klosterhalfen is trying to drop Grovdale here. I, I still fancy Grovdale's chances on that downhill. I think she looked more comfortable um, and she looked more relaxed. So if Klosterhalfen is going to have to open up a gap um, for that downhill descent to be a winning, a winning kind of environment for her. Well, speaking of gaps, the gap behind that pair is massive. It's probably 150 metres, maybe more now. Their last uh, couple of laps have been uh, 5.03 and 5.03, the first two laps up the big full lap. Then they've just done on the third lap a 4.57, so a significant acceleration. That was all down to Klosterhalven. And I get the impression the German there to the left, Hannah, is really letting rip now. This is the final circuit. They're going over this ground for the final time. Only the senior men's race to come. It's pretty chewed up, but Klosterhalven here is really putting it on and... Uh, this next hill will be critical. Both of them are good at running on the downhill, but uh, how will they cope with this upslope? Eight and a half points for Germany at the moment. That is an obscene team score. And it does look like their holder, Miriam Datka, has got, a, got some athletes queuing up behind her. But Alina Ray, if she gets another bronze medal, and she's spoken about those emotional difficulties she's had in that competition environment in the last few months, I would be delighted for her. And, Miriam Datka does falter at all. Hannah Klein will be there to pick up the pieces. But I put in my notes, you know, Carolina Grovdahl, she has improved since last year. But has she improved as much as Constanza Klosterhalfen? And I think that's what we're going to find out. We've got around about three minutes, three and a half minutes maybe left of the race. This is that last big uphill push. You've got to go for broke. This is it now. Make your winning move. You've got to make your competitor hurt as much as you possibly can. 
Oh, a little stumble almost from Kloster Health and there pulls her sleeves up. I don't know if she's getting too warm. Certainly our commentary cabin here, the heating has gone up. Somebody's turned up the heater for some reason in the last half hour, so it's sweltering in here. It's like a sauna, and we're looking out at countryside where it's about one or two degrees. But uh, Grovdal up onto the shoulder of Kloster Halfen now. Again, she's just smoother, a little bit smoother on that upslope than Kloster Halfen. Everything to run here for now. I guess when you try and put them side by side on paper, Kloster Halfen is the quicker of the two. Quicker over 1,500, quicker over every distance. But uh, this is racing, and you can throw the, the form book aside in that respect. Oh, what a race we've got on our hands here. Constanza Klosterhaufen, Carolina Bakelli grovdell toe for toe as they come out of the indoor section. We think it's around about 470 metres from that point there. There's a school of thought for people that have looked at this course. If you come out of that building first, you are going to be first by the time you get to the finish line. But that really isn't what we've seen as these races have unfolded. Drama in the junior men's race. Nick Griggs just stumbling in the closing stages. Will Barnicut swinging right wide. Gaia Sabatini in the mix relay she took advantage of the final flat section what will happen between Constanza Klosterhaufen and Carolina Bekele Grovdale Klosterhaufen the track specialist she's got the foot speed but can you be strong enough to use it at the end of a testing eight kilometer cross country course well Grovdale hits the front once again she's uh, returned the punches that have come at her from Klosterhaufen with interest and kicked hard here. Now, she's no slouch. We've got to remember, Hannah, she was eighth in the World Championships, 5,000 this summer, the Norwegian. She's had a fabulous year. At 32, she's going from strength to strength, and she's easing away from Klosterhelfen now. Barring disaster in this last 100 metres, it's going to be Norwegian gold. Carolina Bakelli Grovdal waited years for her first senior gold medal at these European Championships. That came in Dublin 12 months ago, and it is a brilliant defence of that title. A second gold medal to Norway, and Carolina Bakelli Grovdal, Constanza Klosterhaufen, with one of her best cross country performances of her life, picking up a silver medal. What a battle between those two women! Hats off and may we see that for many years to come. It's Alina Ray, high-stepping, kicking hard. She was the German cross-country champion by quite some margin, and she is going to hold off her 1,500-metre teammate. Or is she? They're toe-for-toe -toe at the line. I was tired on the last lap, and uh, uh, Constance gets some few metres in the last lap. Uh, but I, uh, I knew that uh, the hill and downhill was... Uh, I'm, I'm good at that, so... Uh, it was just to follow her up the hill and down, I just gave it all and uh, luckily that was enough. <laughs>